Hi there and welcome to another one of these weekly videos that I'm trying to do. Um, I had been hoping to make these every Saturday but it just didn't prove possible this week. Um, I ended up taking the kids camping as a sort of our end of summer little camping trip and so you're getting this on a Monday night instead of on a Saturday. What I'm going to be talking about in this particular short video is just something that's a response to a discussion that I've seen going on on a few different Facebook pages, Facebook groups, and that was brought to my attention by a couple of Russian teachers, um, Irina Malinina and Valentina Aspidova. And it's basically to do with what we've tried to do with the outcome series and how we approach vocabulary teaching. And it was really a response to three main questions. The first one of which was, what's the principle behind the selection of the vocabulary that we present in the books? And I guess at the lower levels, what we're trying to do is to cover as far as possible three star and two star words in the dictionary, which means words that are among the most 5,000 frequent words in the language. Um, at the higher levels, we're still interested in frequency. We do still check frequency. Um, we're also interested, you know, we look at other sources like the English vocabulary profile, which is a, a Cambridge University Press kind of device for sorting out level um, and helping you to get some sense of what level words might be worked at, might be used at. Um, but on top of that, it's also just thinking about two other things, really. One is the, the kind of communicative outcome that you want students to be able to perform or manage or achieve once you've presented the vocabulary to them. So kind of what's the vocab for? Um, what is it going to help the students be able to talk about? And within that, I think it's then thinking about at any given level, what vocabulary that's there do you expect most students will already know? What do you expect some students will probably know? And what do you think will probably be new for everybody? Because I think any vocabulary exercise has to have a mixture of those things in it. And obviously you can't know every class, but you can have a clear sense of roughly what students will know at what level. And then what happens is I think you do have to use your intuition. So I'm just looking here at um, uh, an exercise from Outcomes Advanced, which is basically helping people talk about the personal histories of people they know who've had amazing lives. And it includes things like uh, she's from a very privileged background. He won a scholarship to study in the States. He was evacuated during the war. He's from quite a deprived upbringing. He had a shelter, from quite a deprived background, had a sheltered upbringing, uh, saw active service during the war. And obviously not every student will want to use all of those to talk about people they know, but most students will be able to talk about some of the talk about some people they know using some of that language. The next question that came up was why is there so much vocabulary? And I think one answer to that is because there's so much vocabulary. Um, if you look at what research suggests students need to know um, at different levels, Basically, to get to around C1, the sort of end of advance level, where you're ready to take CAE, pass CAE, move on to CPE, you need to know something like 8,000 words. To move from B2 to C1, you're basically looking at moving from sort of a knowledge of 5,000 words to a knowledge of 7,500 to 8,000 words. Um, some people have claimed that every level that you go up, you're basically doubling the number of words you know. And obviously this doesn't just mean knowing individual words, it means knowing how those words work with other words, knowing collocations, knowing how those words interact with grammar, knowing the different meanings that those words have in different kind of word combinations. And Naturally, some of that learning is going to happen incidentally. Some of that's going to be absorbed from reading and from watching TV and that kind of thing. But I think some of that also has to be built into classroom material. And so I think, you know, that there's a need for a lot of language because students have an expectation that they're going to learn a lot of language as they progress up through the levels. And the exams require this language knowledge of them. 
I think the biggest problem is actually in terms of teachers' expectation, where teachers feel that because students have met language and done something with the language and manipulated it and been exposed to it and maybe read it in a vocabulary builder or word list or whatever, that therefore they have to produce it. And I think that's where the problems start, because as a course book writer, as a teacher, I look at a lot of this language as basically being passive knowledge. Um, it's language which students are going to need to help them with their reading in particular, but also to help them with their listening. For some students, some of that language will slowly become part of their active vocabulary. But for a lot of students, their active vocabulary won't necessarily expand massively. So long as they're still developing their passive vocabulary, I think that's fine. So I think the, the biggest issue is actually teachers believing that the input has to become output on the part of the learners. Right, this has gone on a, a minute longer than I was expecting it to, so I'll stop there. If you do have any questions or anything you'd like to see me talking about at any point, please do just message me or put your comments below. Thank you.